Today we're going to be taking a look at Kurtzbell. I'm not 100% sure what to call this, a lobby-based MMO light, an action brawler, or what. In this video, we'll go over how it works, and then you can decide what it is for yourself. Kurtzbell is currently in a closed testing phase, and as far as I know, is meant to be released this year in an early access open beta state, with a rumor I've heard that it's going to be buy to play, but don't hold me on that. I got access and am taking a look at the game because they paid me. This is a sponsored video and look at Kurt's Bell. For more information, check the Steam link in the description. So after sinking some time into Kurt's Bell, the game really boils down to two things. Action combat and anime. In terms of its combat, it's rather good. Some basic information, you choose two different karmas or weapons that you can swap between freely in combat. Each weapon comes with its own move sets and combos, so you can blast them with fireballs and blizzards, and then rush at them with a greatsword to finish them off, all with glorious over-the-top anime-styled attacks. It's not the first game to utilize a weapon swap, but the crossplay between distinct playstyles is notably smooth, as is the movement, especially if you're good at the game, as some people have shown me firsthand with combos that seem to never end using moves from multiple weapons. It also has that RPG flair of utilizing different abilities governed by cooldowns and having different resources to manage. I was also pleasantly surprised to see it had full controller support from the jump. So what do you spend your time fighting? Well, Kurtzbell offers both PvE and PvP. The way you select the content goes like you start in a multiplayer lobbied city, you can choose missions from a centralized map, and some of these are story missions, but let's just address something really early. All of the PvE missions that I've seen are just large boss type monsters. I, I probably should just call them encounters because rarely there's more than one enemy for that fight. And the first time you fight these, generally that's what a story mission will be. And that just means that there's gonna be some sort of narrative or cutscene to watch or a new character to introduce either before or after that fight is done. And you'll move through these rather quickly. And then the map will populate itself with random missions that range from harder versions of these bosses that you've already fought, played either solo or sometimes in a group of two, or mixed in are these missions which are 2v2 PvP battles. And there are three different styles of this PvP, hold the flag, hold a point, and a more traditional just score kills. And as you head out for a mission and return, the available missions will change. Different missions give different rewards. For PvE, there are currencies and a low percent chance for different items to drop based on the difficulty of the encounter. And for PvP, we have similar currencies and winning will raise your chaser ranking. The combat plays a little strange. I actually really like it, but it's hard to describe because yeah, it's action combat and what it looks like is largely how it plays, but there is a slight amount of like target snap of kind of like this not so precise aiming, almost like a soft lock system. In PVE, they use this to allow you to target specific areas of the monster, and you're gonna see the sort of red targeting reticule there. And for PVP, it's kind of like a soft target lock, like I said. There was an older game that never really popped off here. It was called Final Fantasy Dissidia that had a similar feeling. It leads to this combat system, which as you're getting used to it, it feels really easy. The inputs are straightforward, you're pushing buttons and cool things are happening, but it hides a lot of depth. And I mentioned earlier, but in PvP, I thought I was hot shit for a bit, killing teams and players, sometimes without taking damage, utilizing different iframes, and I just sort of knew what they were going to do and there was a lot of counterplay. Then a few matches later, I'm getting the same thing done to me in these combos that made me go like, what are they doing? And if you fight two coordinated players, what they can do is nuts. The skill cap is much higher than it appears. And this simple to use, difficult to master combat is something I think we can all agree on is important for a PVP oriented game. For PVE, it's a little different. Kurtzbell has really interesting and cool looking bosses, and I'm not really into cell shaded anime theming at all, but I was genuinely impressed, especially the dragon. The fights themselves, as the difficulty cranked up and new mechanics to the fights came into play, I could really see potential. But the problem is that you fight them so differently to the PvP, which feels so good. Within combat, there is this break bar. Certain abilities deal less true damage, but more break damage, and depleting this break bar stuns or knocks them down. 
for PvE, it felt like you and your buddy, your main focus is just avoiding all of these different attacks, essentially running around the map like a chicken with their head cut off, and just using your abilities on cooldown, working to break down that bar, stopping and unloading, and then repeating that until they're dead. The dynamic combat from PvP just wasn't there, it's just a lot of running around, and while it was cool to see these fights, it was less cool to play the fights, especially repeatedly. There's also a very modular RPG build and skill system underlying all of the combat and gameplay that we didn't get to see a lot of, it just wasn't in the testing phase. You can choose your weapons, the karmas, the ones that give you the movesets, from a list of gathered karmas that you'll earn and obtain in the game from meeting new characters and other methods, and you can swap these between missions. On top of this, these weapons, there will be different ones of the same type, and they'll have their own stats. In addition to this, Attached to the Karma, there are interchangeable passives, interchangeable abilities, and augments, all of which are customizable and seem to be able to be upgraded and leveled up. And on top of that, there's quite a few equipment slots which can be upgraded and leveled and enhanced and swapped around. Like, the game is built so that, yeah, you might choose a staff, but you may play very differently from somebody else who chooses a staff, at least in the future as more and more options are introduced here. It's just set up with that in mind now. And the gear, while it's up in the air, I hope, based on what we have seen, will be more like picking between different stats. Like you're choosing, okay, do I want these boots with movement speed or these boots with crit? And yes, there will be vertical power gain as you choose which ones you want to sink your currency in to enhance and how you want to enhance them. But it's more about bringing the right loadout or the right gear to support your playstyle into a fight. Again, I haven't seen it fully, so take anything I say there with a grain of salt. I'm only erring on the side of optimism here because stat worries seem to be a PvE specific thing, as I believe I've heard in a dev stream that PvP is completely normalized. This is going to make a lot of the gear that you can hunt after and obtain almost valued more so for its appearance and fashion elements. And this moves us into the second appeal of Kurt Spell, anime. Now, this game starts off with an opening anime short that is actually of decent quality. You can make your mind up about the art or the graphics of the game itself, the character design or the amount of panty shots that you're going to be shown, or the crazy 20 to 1 ratio of females to males. The point here is Kurtzbell obviously has a very specific target audience that they lean into very hard. I love the over-the-top style anime attacks and abilities, but that's where my love of anime theming ends. For others, it's kawaii as hell, and I've been told it maintains a rather high quality of this kawaii. You can play dress up like crazy, and the character creator is way better than it has any right to be. There are these weird, almost JRPG-inspired relationship mini-events, where you build reputation and story with specific NPCs that you meet in cutscenes. If you're into this stuff and waifus and lollies, then the more story-based elements might have a lot more value to you. To me, Kurt Spell is a PvP brawler game. My two favorite parts of the game, and I'm not bringing these up in any kind of way to undermine what I have talked about, I love the UI and menus in Kurt Spell. They're just so modern and clean, and especially for a game still in testing, where for whatever reasons companies love to leave this stuff until the end, it left a really good impression. And the second thing, which is equally as weird, is I love the way they allow you to customize and create hairstyles. It's better than almost any other character creator I've seen. Essentially, you make your own hairstyle by choosing between four different prefabbed slots on sort of the scalp to combine and create your own hair. It is incredibly powerful and you can create some really unique things. And I just wanted to remark on it because usually I'm never surprised by what's in a character creator. I generally don't care at all. Although I will say to all character creators, I don't understand why it's current year and you still can't routinely find a bald option. If you want to know why I regularly play females in games, it's because I only play males with the best hairstyle, completely slick and shaved. As for more relevant things to the actual game, Kurt Spell is another that lives off of a very small slice of content. It does feel good to play. I do like the combat. PvE as a focus would be awesome, but would require a massive amount of regularly added content that increases in difficulty for it to even be considered a focus. Yes, they're probably holding stuff back, but from what I've played, Kurt Spell is a PvP arena game with a fun little distraction to facilitate earning items to play dress up. And it's hamstrung heavily by its heavy, heavy fan service anime theming. 
Now, KOG Games, though, are the ones that are doing this game, and they were responsible for Grand Chase as well as Elsword, so they know a thing or two about this pocket and this niche, so who knows? Unfortunately, the game won't be for me. Too much fan service, too much anime, I'd kind of feel embarrassed if the wife caught me playing it late at night. But if this does look interesting to you, I know that there's a market for this specific type of stuff. Again, you'll find a link in the description, and keep an eye out as I have a feeling that this will be available much sooner rather than later. Well, that will do it for me. Until next time, this is Fever. Peace.